Hi there, Tad Hargrave from Marketing for Hippies. I'm here in London, England, and uh, in a place called uh, Hobart Gardens, I believe. And I've been wanting to record this video for a while, like a lot of my videos, because explicitly or implicitly, what I hear a lot of my clients saying, and I've heard over the years, is I should have made it by now. There's a kind of shame, there's a sense of, uh, I should be further ahead, I, I should have it together. I've been doing this for years, I've spent so much money on my marketing or learning about marketing and, and surely I should be further ahead than I am now. Surely I should have should have made it. And so I just wanna explore that a little bit because of course when people have that thought there's a there's shame, there's a heaviness, there's a sense of inadequacy that immediately blooms. And if you're to take that thought away, <coughs> your whole experience of your business becomes very different. So I just want to invite you, if you have this thought anywhere lingering, that you should be further ahead or you should have made it by now, to consider the opposite. Just to linger on it for a moment. The opposite is you should not have made it by now. You shouldn't be any further ahead than you actually are right now. And if you just pause to consider the evidence for that, you might actually find there's more evidence for that, more compelling evidence for that, than the story that you should be further ahead. And I made a list of it. One is, you might not actually be an entrepreneur. That's an important thing. That may not be your gig. There are some people who are just constitutionally not built to be entrepreneurs. I've seen it so many times. They're built for uh, a job. They're built for a nonprofit. That's not, I'm not disparaging, by the way. Or, you know, they're built to be a farmer. They're built for a lot of things that aren't the kind of solopreneur, life coach, entrepreneurship that many of us know. So there may just be that could be that you didn't have a niche you know you didn't even think about it for years and you just tried to help everyone with everything you know and then how on earth are you going to succeed with no niche or no business model or no uh, well-crafted offers I've seen people with none of those things they say god why haven't I made it and to me it's immediately obvious could be that they were underfinanced they just didn't have the money saved a lot of people imagine they're going to start this kind of permaculture or life coaching or holistic practitioner business and be immediately profitable. It's madness. You know, if somebody opened a restaurant, they wouldn't expect to be profitable for three years, but somehow with service providers, we imagine we will be. Could be that uh, those people didn't <coughs> get enough help. A lot of people try to do everything on their own, but it takes a lot. You know, you need a lot of advice, a lot of help to, uh, to make it. And it could just be generally that they didn't know very much or enough about uh, marketing or business. But, you know, that's very possible too. So many of the top entrepreneurs, you know, the Richard Bransons of the world, failed so many times. They went bankrupt so many times before they succeeded. And some of them still do. It's not a given. You know, sometimes I think we look at those people and think, oh, well, they're such successes, but... You know, of course, we've heard the story so many times. Thomas Edison failed 10,000 times to invent the electric light bulb and all this. There's also a way that this can turn into a story of, well, I've, I've failed so far and therefore I will always fail. And therefore I'm a failure. And the universe is unkind and unfair. And it's just good to pay attention to where our thoughts go with these things. I've also talked to some people who say, well, I should have made it by now. But once I talk to them a little bit more, what appears is that they're actually, it's a, there's a secret relief that they haven't made it because they don't actually want to succeed at the thing that they're doing. Or they realize if they succeed with the current business model they have, it'll destroy them. And so there's a part of them that actually doesn't want to succeed in that way. Uh, you know, and then it could just, could just be that you are ahead of your time, you know? just way ahead of your time that's a very possible thing to be so then of course if you're ahead of your time and you're offering some of the people don't know they need yet of course it's gonna be a struggle and then finally to me the most compelling is you've probably had a very full life there's kids there's your spouse if you've got one grandkids possibly there is family and friends there's sickness and illness and deaths and then just your life just enjoying your life. Years ago, I wrote a blog post called uh, I'm Broke and I Don't Care or I Don't Give a Shit or something like this because I realized it was, gosh, four or five years ago in the summer. I just looked at my bank account. I had no more money because I'd spent the whole summer just enjoying myself, going to festivals, having a good time. I wasn't working. 
and I looked at it and I felt really good about my bank balance. I thought, you know what? I wouldn't change a thing. I'm so glad I did what I did. Could I be further ahead in my business? Yes, definitely. So could you. Probably if you gave up everything else in the quality of life. My guess is you haven't. My guess is if you really look at it, you're glad about it. Anyways, if you have that thought, I should have made it by now. Hopefully this is a little bit of medicine, some balm for your soul. And so uh, signing off from, from London.